Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Urban Dictionary defines a fast lifestyle, lifestyle as one that will land you dead or in jail at any given moment. There are many different ways to live the fast life. These include drug dealing, robbing, gang banging, or prostituting your body for money. For the Nigerian youth, the list is endless. Now, the fast life is often a perilous career path for hustlers who make money fast in the streets. Consequently, fast life hustlers that make it to old age without being imprisoned, crippled, or killed is rare because negative actions have negative consequences. Now, people who live the fast life often lack morals, so they constantly choose to engage in dangerous, reckless activities that endangers their own well-being and safety as well as others. Now, it is easy to start... I mean, to start living fast and let your life spiral out of control. The best remedy to surround yourself with positive people, develop a strong set of morals, enjoy your guilty pleasures in moderation, and keep a good relationship with God. With the crave, very strong crave <laughs> for all good things in life. Is this possible for the Nigerian youth? No. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet on us at Plus TV Africa or at your Africa One with the hashtag Waze. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 uh, We're going to come to our guest shortly. Uti, I just want to hear your two minutes <laughs> or one minute talk. Um, hmm. Is it possible? So I think it's possible. Um, really? I don't want to come in today and make it sound like the Nigerian youth are completely hopeless. I think that the Nigerian youth are resilient, are hardworking. Um, given the bright opportunities, I think that we can make something out of nothing. Um, so yeah, really, I, do, I, I could go the opposite way and say yes, but I mean, we'll come to that. But I think that in general, um, our youth, when we talk about the fast life, I think I want to talk about it in a relative way because Nigerians as a whole, we like the good life, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you can't blame us. This country is a jungle in the best possible way. <laughs> um, so to stay sane, you do have to find a way to entertain yourself, so the Owan bears and all of that. Um, it, that is our culture. It is part of what it is to be inherently Nigerian, and I wouldn't want us to lose that. And we've always had that. So the difference there now is just that mm. social media has come in, there's a lot more, you know, globalization, everything, the youth are more exposed mm. to a lot and it can be overwhelming. And you know, with Nigerians, we can take everything to excess and it's that excess that is the problem. Really? Yes. Okay. All right, so let me bring in our guest. <laughs> Thelma is very passionate about African economic development in the area of youth innovation across Nigeria and Africa as a whole. She is an advocate for youth in Nigeria and runs an SME-focused NGO, Moja. Now, Moja is a Nigerian-focused non-profit organization and incubator that specializes in bridging the gap between the working class and those at the bottom of the pyramid. We're going to bring in our other guests shortly, but Thelma, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Uwa. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, so when you saw the topic... Um, Faji, fraud, and, you know, the Nigerian <laughs> youth, the fast life and all of that. What was your first thought that came to your mind? Because you work with young people. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know what I thought. I just thought, yeah, the youth terrain. The, mm -hmm. the youth terrain. I mean, it's such a big thing in Nigeria, especially amongst the youth. And, you know, not even just in Nigeria as well. I think those in the diaspora as well is what they usually rely on just because of the culture here. So, yeah. Huh. But I, I was wondering, um, Uti, um, with the advent of very, very strong, um, would I call it oppression on social media? Hush Puppy and... Um, three, Monfa, the yeah, on. there's the Mofa, <laughs> there's the Ade herself that was freed, yeah. <laughs> you know, and the Mofa went visiting mm. and all of that. Um, where did this even, where did this energy you know, for, for all the fast things, all the, because you can barely watch a skid right now online on social media that does not involve, you know, oh, buy me money, this mm -hmm, one car, mm -hmm, blah, blah, mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. you know, you hardly can watch anything. If I, if you come with the normal, as like your normal thing, you're boring. Doesn't work, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work, work for the young person, you know, mm -hmm. so doesn't. where did this, all of this, where did it start from? I think it's been a progression. So mm. when you look at, again, I, I think I keep saying back to culture, back to culture. We've come, um, I remember in the mid-90s, 
when the first social experiment TV show was done by MTV and it was called The Real Life. And it was similar to what has evolved today into Big Brother and all the various different shows. Um, and this idea of voyeurism and wanting to watch people and wanting to see what they're doing, um, it started to evolve from there. And those shows kind of morphed into the shows about the rich Paris Hilton and, and um, what's Nicole Richie mm. and all those different types of shows. And then social media came along and it gave everybody this opportunity to create a persona, create a life for themselves. And like I said, with Nigerians, you know, we take it to uh, the next level. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we come and even before, you, know, and you have to think about it. And this is why, like I say, culturally, we've always been like this. Because yeah. before social media, we've always been about the parties. We've always been about the, um, what's that thing called? Asha Ebi and the shoes and the designer clothes. We've always been lavish as Nigerians. Social media has just now given you an avenue to show it to the no, world. But the yeah. first life. Mm -hmm. In this sense, you know, if you go by the dictionary, it's not about really about the Ashwabi. Do you? No, it's yeah. not. And I, I completely understand what you're saying. But mm -hmm. I think it began with our grandfathers, actually. Mm. Because growing up, what you usually see is that your dad, I mean, the majority of Nigeria, the fathers is... I mean, not speaking for everybody, let's not get controversial, mm -hmm. Controversial, sorry, is that they usually make money in an inadequate way. Mm -hmm. In a way that's not so, you know legit as people would say yeah and then they invest it into something that's a lot more legitimate right they hide it behind a business or whatever the case may be um so then they've grown up and watched how you know the fathers will look after the mothers and the mothers wouldn't really have to work she can do what she wants pretty much or she'll raise the kids and then that same thing has followed on you know the same thing like would you call them um uh, they call them zaddies now, but mm. sugar daddies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a big thing for a woman to have sugar daddies. In fact, amongst the youth, you'll find that a lot of marriages um, between the ages of about 26 to about 35, there are women who are married to men and then have men on the side, mm -hmm. which is really sad. You know, I have you know, people around me who have, are actually living that life just to afford the Hermes bag or just to afford the trip to Dubai or whatever the case may be. Because a huge thing in Nigeria amongst the youth is, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, uh, materialist, be materialistic, mm -hmm. number one. And also what people think of you. There's a word for it, but I can't think mm -hmm. of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's one of the main thing. It's always trying to be uh, socially acceptable. Yeah. So, yeah, socially acceptable, I agree. I think, I mean, again, this, what you've just described, I don't think um, is, a, is a larger part of the populace because what you've described um, even happened at the poorer levels. So you have the man who has a small house in a village somewhere and has four wives and he's so it, it's not i don't necessarily think that where i sort of agree with you is that the increase in mm. corruption and the availability of fast money uh -huh. has yeah. created Essentially, the taps are flowing, mm -hmm. yeah. and more people are like, you know what, I'm just going to go and drink from this same tap. Yeah. There's lots of other ways to get water, but you know what, this tap is gushing it's, right now, yeah. so let I'm going to go to and yeah, stick to easier. that tap. It's <laughs> easier. Yeah. All right, so yeah. let, me, let me bring in our second guest. Um, Leigh Johnson is the chief executive of Lightfield House International, a talent profiting organization. He is the president of Achievers Consortium International, ACI, a community of young professionals who collaborate and share resources to help raise the next generation of leaders in Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank Arbalist. you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> so how are you? Thank you, Uti. Fantastic. Good to <laughs> see you. Thamar, I like your accent. <laughs> Maybe you will take time and teach me some of this. Uh, awesome. Definitely. All right, so, um, <laughs> thank you for having me today on the show. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us this, um, this evening. So you heard our conversation on the fast life and fraud and how it's growing rapidly amongst the Nigerian youth. What are your thoughts? Well, I... If you had not given me a definition of fast life from, I don't know the dictionary that you're consulting now, but uh, oh, my dictionary. <laughs> I would have said that everybody wants the best things in life quickly. Wouldn't you like to build your first house before you're 25 or 30? Wouldn't you like to retire earlier? Wouldn't you like to have your first grandkid when you are 40? 
you know, and all of those kinds of things. I, I don't know. Is that what you mean by first life? I don't think that's what you mean. I think what you mean is the illegality yeah. that has come to define our society in a race for material things because they have tied their value or sense of, of self-worth to those material things. And I think that's where the problem is. I think as far as that goes, that is a very big issue for all of us. Young people in this country are in a big mess. And let me very quickly say that that mess was created by all of the people who have gone ahead of them. Thank you. Because I think it was Uti that said, um, <clears throat> it said something about culture. And, and culture is a very powerful thing, really. A lot of people are not paying attention to the power of culture. Culture is not where we are Shwebi or we eat bitter cola or we take bright fries. That's not what it is. Culture is anything you celebrate. Anything, you're the word. All right. If you the word, society was a first life. Okay. okay? Uh, a young man who hits it at 30, uh, builds a very beautiful house in the village, is able to sponsor a chief dancing title in his town, and then he gets received. No matter how he made that kinds of money, and everybody sings his praise. I mean, what are you talking about? That's culture right there. Mm -hmm. All right. So the things that you celebrate eventually becomes the thing that become culture. It doesn't matter whether our forefathers did it or not. And, and that's the point here. From, from social media to our popular culture to religious culture and all of that, the fast life is celebrated. Our top 100 under 20, top 100 under 30, the wealthiest people under 40. What's that? That's culture. That's fast life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you make people feel like if you are not able to break even and, you know, break the bank at a certain age, uh, maybe something is wrong with your training, your upbringing, or maybe something is wrong with you altogether. Mm -hmm. And as soon as people get that in their mindset, it forms what you call a mental frame. Mm -hmm. So that mental frame now dictates what your life should be. All right? A lot of young people are out there trying to be benefit boys. Why? Because of the fast life. <laughs> Why do you think they want to do that? Because that's what is recognized. I mean, if you become a tout here in Nigeria, you make it big and quick. Who knows? Maybe you get to be nominated by federal government to lead a contingent to some place in the world. That's what we celebrate. Uh, you, you, get, you get a picture? It matters now who you know. And you don't get to know people if you're not able to afford the bills to be able to stay in the big hotels or do all the big things that they do. People say the first oh. line of the quick. Sorry, well, so I, I'm like some way to... He's a big and be relevant to society. You must understand that the need for respect and honor, the, risk, the need to be held in high esteem and dignified in society is the strongest instinct of man after survival. Hmm. The strongest. All right. So anything that gives you that sense of value in society is what people will go for. So fast life is entrenched. In our society, people get to lose a lot of value and we throw scruples out the window, who cares? I mean, all you have to do is to pay attention to the news. And then you will see fast life all over the place. It doesn't matter who is involved. It could be a minister, it could be uh, people who don't want you to talk. They ask you to off the mic. You're saying too much. You know, that kind of thing. We <laughs> okay, so Abode, you, you brought and us we to are that. In the face of busy the sensibilities of poor Can people. You hear me? And that's where the challenge comes from. All right. Well, please control your mic. Otherwise, I'm a seven hour facilitator. So you have to learn how to gauge me. No, no problem, Rob. I can see that already. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. All right, so I was going to even ask him. Um, I was going to ask Thelma, and I was going to ask him, where who sets this standard? You know, when you talked about um, the strongest um, outside of survival, the strongest is that need, you know, to be seen that you are you are there. You know, that's Successful. yeah, that's success yeah. need. Who sets the standard for success? Then I was going to ask you. Um, because I, I didn't want to put it like uh, it's our, 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 I don't want to call anybody like political leaders. I'm just saying the people that have gone ahead of us. I love that, that phrase you used. How have they influenced it? Because recently, um, the, the former president of Basanjo wrote a letter about the late senator that died, Ruji Kashamu. And he said some things. And in that letter, um, he made some remarks about how, you know, he evaded the law and all of that. Then all of a sudden, a video surfaced online, and I was showing my colleague Uti the video surfaced online, and we, we saw him at a party, you know, you know, uh, spraying money in packets, not no longer uh, pieces Notes. in packets. And I was saying that you know, 
these are the standards that we have celebrated over the years yeah. you know so who created this standard and if at all we can trace how the standards were created how can we undo you know this creation that's you know <laughs> maybe you should come then abale will join yeah, very important question. Um, I have to go again with the people who have gone ahead of us. Mm. I mean, when you are seeing your senators and your leaders doing the impossible and making it look possible, it then makes you feel like, oh, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the respect that comes with it, actually. And I think the number one thing that the Nigerian youth look for more than anything is the respect. So if somebody comes to uh, Nigeria from somewhere visiting for a few weeks, they have to make sure they're renting a Range Rover as mm. opposed to driving a simple car. Mm. It's the respect that comes with it. Also, if you want to climb the corporate ladder, if you want to get more clients in business, you want to look package a certain way. So it's all about packaging. So it's not even, you know, your fellow uh, uh, age mate or your fellow youth who's your, who you're competing with anymore. It's those at the top. So I think they've set the standards um, and it's almost impossible to eradicate because you're showing them, you by you doing that and following the fast life, you're showing them that you're relevant. Mm. And that's what they're always looking for, mm. the most relevant person. And that's why people like Mumfa is relevant because I don't actually know what he actually does. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Hush Puppy. I didn't even know he had a real estate business. Same thing with, uh, I mean, there are you know some who have come out and they have a, a personal brand like Obi and Victor's, people mm -hmm. like him. But I think a lot of these you know fast life uh, uh, individuals, they don't have anything else other than the fact that they are fast life. Mm. You know, they give that, um, that, um, that, uh, not analogy, I, but I can use that word, that analogy of you can have it all, mm. you know? <laughs> I'll let you speak. <laughs> okay, before we come to, because we're going to go on a very short break, we'll be right back. I, I was going to ask um, about um, this respect that you're talking about. Is the respect even real? Mm. You know, or it is just a fake respect. Do you understand? Yeah. It's, because... it's, it's, it's as real as the money you have. So yes. <laughs> the day the money stops, <laughs> yes, the exactly. Okay, so let's quickly go. <laughs> <laughs> When we return, we'll take uh, <laughs> our um, Johnson's um, remarks. Stay with us.